welcome to another Dawn and Julia Create, where Dawn has asked us to make tiny art. So shall we just get started? This is a little collection of tiny things that I thought could possibly work for this particular prompt. Now Dawn and I are very good at the minute. We have got our prompt sorted for a good few months, so I have had time to contemplate this. Dawn suggested a tiny canvas or a fork. I feel she was quite attached to the fork idea, so purely for Dawn, I've decided to go with the fork. Um, but as the weeks have been passing, I've been going around my craft room seeing lots of different things. And in the end, I decided that although I really want to do the fork for Dawn, I really want to do the tag for me. I also had ideas for the buttons and the canvas. So I'm going to do them all. So as you can see, we have started off with said fork. Now I have an idea for this. We are going under the sea. Yes, again, last the, the last mixed media project that Dawn um, asked us to do, I went under the sea. But the reason being is the Little Mermaid she talks about a dingle hopper which is a fork so when i saw the fork and i really got to do the fork for dawn the idea of it being a dingle hopper just stuck and i absolutely had to do that now so i used various different raffia things i've cut up a bit of a green flower i mean when are you going to use a green flower any other way to be honest to try and make it look a little bit seaweedy and then I've got some broken bits of jewellery just to sort of stick down, a few extra leaves. I'm just sort of getting bits and pieces to get texture. Now, although I kind of go for texture and that's what I was thinking of, actually all the things that I've put on there are quite under the sea themed colours anyway. So that was very fortuitous. So I've also added a few little paper bubbles from... Um, one of my die sets and then finally to give that look of bubbles I'm adding a few little gems. I am using my hot glue Um, I don't normally use my hot glue but I at this point in my crafty life I had run out of gel medium so thankfully these are tiny art projects as we have discussed and although gel medium would have been advisable I think because they're so little we're going to get away with it. So far so good nothing has particularly pinged off so with hindsight, it's kind of worked okay. So this is this one. Now, I have a confession to make. Last time, one of Dawn's prompts, I'm not saying, I'm saying last time. One of Dawn's prompts in the recent past, I think it was where we made the snippet roll, required the use of lace. And Dawn very specifically said, use lace. And I messaged Dawn, because I don't own any lace. Um, I'm really sorry, I hate using lace. I don't own lace. So can I use my fabric scraps instead? To which she said yes. And then I had a really good clear out of my craft space and discovered, yes, I do have lace. And to add insult to injury, not only did I have lace, but they were lace from Dawn's card making kits. So I have two packets of lace that Dawn has gifted me. <laughs> and I had not yet used. So as recompense to apologise to the lovely fantastic Dawn, I'm using lace in this little project, even though I hate lace. The little jigsaw pieces have come, do you know you get these little sort of gift boxy type things for kids? They're like these surprise eggs and they have like a guaranteed sort of like a little plush and a little toy and a little sweetie. It was one of those and the little toy that came in it was a jigsaw which took Kezia all of like two seconds to complete and then she wasn't interested. So I squirreled that away because it had cute little jigsaw pieces which I thought would be perfecto for mixed media. This one is a tag. So this is a little chipboard tag. Um, it was off something that my daughter would have purchased because it is stitch themed and she loves stitch and I'd squirreled this away for a little project. So this one, as soon as Dawn mentioned Tiny Art, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this tag. Um, so that's why we have done it. But as I said, I, I think Dawn's going to go fork. I think Dawn's going to do a fork. I'm going to call it because as I said, she seemed quite tickled by the idea. So I think that's what she's going to do. So this one I did for me. And then finally we have this button. I think I was going through some of my mixed media stash for the last Dawn and Julia Create. Saw this button that I'd obviously put on a project. Sometimes when I make a mixed media project for Telebox Land. I have to make it to a certain different stages and then I end up with random pieces like this that were needed for the TV studio but now I've got a sort of half prepped 
button. So I thought that would be really cute as a tiny project as well. So I am pushing the raffia through this. I wanted it to look like it had been threaded up with something. And so that was the point of that. Um, I think it's really cute. I also have discovered that I own a few more of these buttons and I think it'd be quite nice to do a little set of three. So that may be a project for the future. I am getting out some flowers and just sort of building off to the side of this particular project. Um, with some flowers. I also added some buttons, which you will see in a minute. Now, because I'm coming off the little MDF button, I did find that I gradually needed to build up support at the back. So as I was putting things down, you'll see me sort of twist around in a little bit and I have to, so here I've put the buttons there and then I was putting more buttons further out, but then it was getting really floppy because it was only sticking to the actual flowers. So I did have to get another bit of cardboard and put it behind there and sandwich it just so it had a little bit of stability. So yeah, that is the four pieces all prepped. So we have gone with four rather than one. Now this is a way I would recommend doing mixed media. Have a mixed media day. I did all of this in one sitting. So although quite often these videos, you see it from start to finish, in reality, that's not how I work. Um, I like this, I put all of the stuff on, that's all dried. Now I'm gessoing everything. And then I go to the color stage. So I'm mixing it up a little bit. As I said, fortuitously, fortuitously, what is that? That is, that is my word. I've just invented that. Fortunately, or fortuitously, See, I can't see it correctly. Um, this particular project was already green and under the sea colour. So I went with clear gesso on that. Um, I'm going to do two projects here with a white gesso. So the tiny little canvas. So the white gesso is my comfort zone. And this little button, we're going to go white gesso with that. And for the sake of like showing lots of different techniques in this video, we are going to go black gesso for the little tag. Which is, again, there's a bit of irony about that because I, I don't normally go black gesso. And yet the tag that I wanted to do for me, I've gone black. There you go. It is how it is sometimes. So we prepped all that, waited for it to dry, and now we are going to go through the various projects. So this one, I did actually add a tiny bit of white to certain areas as well. I'm not, I don't need to do much to this, to be honest. It's looking kind of how I would want it to look. I just want to deepen some of the colors in the shadow areas. So I've got some blue Pebio paint. This is gorgeous. It's got a gorgeous iridescence to it. Um, a wee bit shiny, which is just lovely. And I am just dry brushing that on. So you can kind of see me sort of put paint onto the brush, dab it away. And then I'm just trying to get into the crevices and into the center of those leaves. So we get that sort of contrast between shadow areas and highlight areas. It's just the way I love to work. Because my gorgeous Aquatic Adventures collection is digital, we can resize. So this gorgeous little mermaid, I have cut down really tiny. I printed her really, really tiny. So she works on the tiny art. So shout out to Digital Kits for that. And then I just typed the sentiment Dingle Hopper. That's not in the set, but I just typed that out and cut, uh, printed it out. And then I'm just adding a little bit of blue just to sort of soften it so it doesn't look too harsh white and it blends in with everything there and popping the gorgeous little mermaid on there. I think you can just about still see that it's a fork. You could also kind of go down the route that it could have been a trident. You know, there, there are many, there are many things, connections that would have worked. And now we are going with souffle as well to add a little bit of sparkle. I reckon Dawn's gonna add some souffle as well. I, yeah, I definitely think she's gonna go fork. She's going to go fork. It'd be really cool if she did a whole collection, knife, fork and spoon. That, uh, that, if not, if she's not, that's just giving her an idea and I can guess what her next challenge is going to be. Anyway, we add a little bit of souffle to that for a, some added under the sea sparkle. And there we go. That is this particular project all done, sparkle and all. And time to move on to the next two. So these are the ones that were gessoed white. I'm using some Kuretake Gansi Tambis. This is the Art Nouveau collection. I will link to all products below in the description box below. I kind of wanted to go sort of soft vintagey colours on these particular ones. I once did a project and I sort of failed to show 
um, I failed to put the camera on as the blues and greens were mixing as I sprayed them with water. So we're kind of recreating that look because I, I love the way it all turned out. And I sort of did these two particular projects simultaneously because we had the same paint going on them both and I was pretty much using the same techniques on both of them. I love the button one. I absolutely want to make a set of buttons. I mean, just how cute does that look? Once the paint had dried, um, I got a little bit of gold paint and just sort of lightly tapped it into my brush and then just dry brush that again. It helps to bring out the texture and it also just gives this gorgeous, really subtle, gilded effect. Now Dawn has, I mean I love Dawn's sentiments, Dawn brings out lots of sentiments and she has packs, but she has like foiled sentiments. I cannot begin to tell you the lushness of this product. It is just gorgeous and she does them in gold, bronze and a rose gold. So I chose one of the rose gold sentiments and I just popped that down on there and then I chose a um, souffle that matched. Actually, this is a souffle I haven't really picked up very much. It's not one that I've been naturally drawn to. I don't think it's my normal colourways, but it really suited this soft vintage. And as it tried, you saw, as it dries, you see how it colour matched when I checked it against the swatch book. So we just add a little bit of sparkle to that one and it's all done. Now I really want to make a feature of these particular roses at the bottom. So although we've got the loose watercolour effect around it, I'm painting these roses out solidly um, with some acrylic paint. Again, I have used multiple tones on the rose and the leaf um, to get that to work. Now those are the same leaves that went on the Dingle Hopper project and look how different they look with a bit of white gesso and a little bit of paint. I love that. I love that with mixed media you can take things into multiple different directions. This little love sentiment also came in one of Dawn's card kits and I've just painted it with gold and that is going to be the sentiment on this. Again I'm just adding a little bit of dry brushing like we did to the other one. Although I didn't find that the sentiment had enough sheen or polish to it so I've actually pulled out the gilding wax to give it a much more metallic look because um, the paint sort of sadly lacked a little bit at that particular point. The fact that I have used pebble gilding wax it is furniture grade so it means you can buff it up so we've got a much better sheen on that and I've stuck that down just trying to edge this here this is one of the Uhu markers that is a paint marker and we have some gold paint so just coming in and using that and then I'm going to add a doodly border so I start off with this sort of fine pen which was fine but as I went to the lace it was wrecking the nib so I switched out and changed it to a gel pen instead just to finish it and I also felt that the love sentiment was a little bit lost the colours behind it didn't really make the actual sentiment pop so just to add a bit more detail I traced inside it so that we have a bit of a black line in the centre and that is that little cutie all done. So finally we are moving on to the project that I particularly wanted to do. This little tag, it's so cute. I have had this saved in my stash for a little while. Um, I now feel I need to go out and buy more stitch things for my daughter just to get some more of these little chipboard tags. They are so cute. We are looking at creating a patina effect. Um, there is loads of gorgeous patina kits out there on the market and they are lovely. I have some, not going to lie. But you can literally create patina with any of the colouring mediums that you currently own. You just need a sort of orangey brown colour for the rusty colour, a teal colour for where it's oxidised and a little bit of white and then if you want to really lift it you can add a bit of gold as well that makes it look metallic but those colours together will create a patinaed effect. Now on this particular tag I built up the layers maybe about three times I would do it and then find that one colour was maybe becoming a little bit dominant so here it's looking a bit too rusty for my liking um, we'd kind of lost the rust so I kind of added more realized it was a bit too much and so now I'm coming in with a little bit of the blue just to bring that out and to yeah give it that oxidized look a little bit more and bring the colors together but this is a really easy process and just take your time it's lots and lots of dry brushing going up in layers but it looks fabulous I mean that's just junk and then some of those little embellishment pieces were really gaudy and bright in real life but 
once you just give them a little bit of mixed media magic completely different transforms them now I like to work with contrast I do feel that creating a dark edge to a project really helps it to pop we've got some gorgeous metallics in here um, that really have a lot of luminescence um, but they're kind of lost so by creating that dark um, edging to it it just really makes the whole project pop and it also dries in dries in it doesn't dry in at all it draws your eye in <laughs> so you can see um, what is actually going on I just want to make all of those gorgeous embellishments a bit more noticeable so we are using a little bit of gilding wax that's just really going to bring out the texture so we can see all of the elements we can see the clock and the keys and the little house and the little butterflies it'll just help that to pop quite a bit once again because we have used the Pebio gilding wax you can actually polish that so we get a nice bright finish I didn't feel that the distress ink did enough to blacken out the edges so I'm coming in again with the black gesso I've watered it down slightly and I'm just literally pounding um, or scruffling as the lovely Lynette says um, the edges of that just to really make the edges a lot more dark and that is this particular project almost finished I just finally once I've darkened that get out some um, sentiments from the Tim Holtz collection and just add the little tag there so that is it all finished and these are all the projects that we completed today please do pop across to see what the lovely Dawn has done if you enjoy mixed media you might enjoy checking out this video here and I will see you very soon